this morning when the bulletin was given to me and I looked at the lineup and I saw Dennis, I was like, oh, Dennis, you want to preach today? Praise God. And when I looked at the last name, I got tricked. So I said, okay. I'm thankful that he's giving the mini sermon today for all of us, all right? Amen. Yeah. Well, if it's necessary, he goes, it is. 
And he goes, and, and I, and will you ever tease me about being afraid of spiders? And he goes, no. Like I said, he was really pretty. And uh, so he's <laughs> putting up with this. Well, so he, he went through all these questions and increasing. And she goes, okay, now, if you still want to go on a date with me, it's okay. <laughs> I'll go with you. And uh, so he, she, he goes, man, she's kind of a strange young lady, but she's pretty. So they, they went on a date, and it went well. I guess he squashed the appropriate number of spiders. And uh, after he graduated, they got married and had a couple kids. And, and they, well, kids, just they were par barely able to walk yet. And they always knew that if they saw mommy screaming, standing on some piece of furniture somewhere, that they need to go out and find the spider and kill it and take its little carcass outside throw it in the garbage or in the log yard so she can't see it, even when they're tiny little kids. So, and that's what they did. Well, they got big, and they went to college. Well, now it got complicated. She had to get the neighbors involved, because if she was in the house and, and she saw a spider walking on the house, she was in the house until that spider was dead. If she was outside and saw a spider in the house, she was outside until a spider was dead. And they had put special screens up, they even permanently taped some of the windows shut in the house so spiders couldn't get through the tape because they, well, they don't have imposing thumbs, so they can't get the tape off. So, and it just went on. Well, she, when the, her children went to, off to college, she got another job and, and it was working. It was, it, everything's working out. Her, or her husband was a pastor, I can say that. Probably prayed for her often, and uh, one day after work, she would she's coming home and she would do some shopping. She had two big bags of groceries in her hand, in her arms, and she as she walked up to the door and she got the key working and she walked in to a spider web, and she was already screaming and running back to the car before the grocery bags even had a chance to splat on the floor. And she ran back to the car, and then she realized that she couldn't run away because the keys are still in the door. And as she was running, she felt it, and it was in her hair. And she hit herself in the head, and she, it, was, it was big. It was like the size of a small dog or something. You know, she, it was laying eggs, and they were going to hatch pretty soon, and she's getting back to the car. And, oh man, it was terrible. She's screaming. And, and finally, she kind of calmed herself, and she didn't have a key, but she had, they had a hide a key in her car. So she's fumbling around. She got the hide a key, and she stuck it in the door, and she unlocked the door. And it was a car where you could unlock the door, but you couldn't start the car. And she only had, they lived out in the uh, kind of country, so there's only three houses close by, and she'd beat on the doors and no one was home, and she had to sit in the car, knowing that spider is either in her hair, in fact, she, to look, she, she actually reached up and grabbed the mirror, and broke the mirror off the windshield, to look to see where that spider was, and she realized that either it was smaller than she initially thought, it wasn't the size of a small dog, it was smaller than that. But she couldn't find this. She couldn't find the eggs, and she couldn't find the hatching spiders in her hair. She couldn't find any of that. And she goes, "Oh no!" She goes, "What am I going to do?" Well, her husband had a late meeting, and but he finally got home and saw her out in the car, and he knew what's going on. And she goes, "He goes, where is it? Because it's in the house. If you can't find it in my hair, it's in the house." So he went through her hair, didn't see, went through the car, because she was in the car, wasn't there, so he went through the house. Finally in the morning, you know, several hours later, he found it behind the bookcase in the living room. And so then they could go in and clean up the mess all over the front where the eggs and the milk and everything splattered all over everything. And the front step. And she realized she has to do something. She prayed and a plan came to Thank you, Lord, I have a plan. She called a pet store. Do you have spiders at the pet store? And they go, yes. And he goes, 
Now, are they in cages or are they just hanging around? And she goes, they're, they're in cages, they're secure. She goes, can I come down and look at them? And they go, well, okay, you know, sure. So she went down to the pet store. She got out and she goes, what aisle are the spiders in? And they told her, aisle three, you know, and so you counter down on the other. So that's that aisle. Yeah. So she walked down and she ran by the aisle. And she went up and she came back and she waited. She got enough nerve and she ran by the aisle again and left. Next day she did the same thing. She did that for a week. She didn't even, she just couldn't even go down that aisle. But the next week she was, I have to do, do something. So she tried to just walk normal speed past the aisle. And a couple, after a couple of days, she was, I've got to go down the aisle with the spiders. And she walked down and she just did this. And she just looked at the floor, didn't look at anything. She didn't know where the spiders were on the aisle, but she wasn't going to even find it out. And she did that. For two weeks, she would just walk down that aisle before she, well, she started running down the aisle, then she started walking and slowing down. And then after two weeks of doing, going down the aisle, she finally had enough nerve to look to see where those spiders were. And she saw it, she was like, oh, and she ran out the store. And it just went on and on, week after week. And finally, she was able to stop in front of the spiders and look at them. Just look at it. And they were in cages. I mean, it wasn't like they were running around on the shelves or something. They were in cages. And after another couple of weeks, she bought one. And of course, you know, they, it wasn't like a granddaddy long leg with long skinny legs or one of the little tiny ones. It was a tarantula. A big, hairy, meat-eating, scary spider. And she bought it. And she bought a special custom cage for it so it wouldn't get out. And she bought it, and she just pointed at it and says, I'll take that with that good cage there, and I'll buy some tarantula food and whatever you need. And she, she put it in there. And, and then they, and she goes, OK, well, here it is. And she goes, well, put it in the sack. So they put it in a sack for her, and she went, she went back to work, and she put it on her desk, and she dumps the thing out, and she takes a pencil and a ruler, and she shoves it at the back of her desk and throws paper over it. But she had told everyone what she was going to do, and so her, the other people working in the office, they helped her, they helped her feed it, and they helped it clean the cage and keep it like this. And then after several weeks, she could actually have some of the papers off and she could see it every once in a while. Four months later, she was finally able to feed it and kind of clean it real carefully. I mean, well, I should, well, quickly, I should say, clean the cage. Four months. It was almost six months through this process trying to get used to seeing a spider. And she finally got to the point where, okay, she's not afraid of it anymore. They, you know, they walk around, and I don't know if you've ever played with tarantulas or not, they're kind of weird. But uh, anyway, it was there. And it was fed, it was still still growing bigger. And they finally got, she finally says, okay, I'm pretty good with this thing now. I don't like it, I don't like him, but I'm not scared of him anymore. And they had a new girl come in the office, and all of a sudden there's this screaming going on. She goes, what's going on? She goes, there's a spider on your desk. And she goes, oh, she grabs a cage and goes, it's nothing wrong, it's just a spider, you know, it's trapped, like this. And she realized that she was over her fear, and she didn't, well, she didn't keep the spider after that. She took it back to the pet store and says, here's the spider. <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't take it home. She, it never got home, but she was, she got over her fear. Now, in the Bible, there's hundreds of verses about, you know, fear not, don't worry, you know, put your fears away, I'm with you, all this kind of, all these promises, because God knows it. We all have fears of some sort. But you know what? With every fear that he's given us, he has, he has a plan, just like he gave Sherry a plan 
to overcome that fear. He's given us a plan. And if we just think it and try to recognize his voice of how to overcome that fear, we can overcome that fear. And God will bless us. In fact, I even wrote down here, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all things, acknowledge Jesus, and he will direct your paths. That's a promise that if we have fear, he will direct us in some kind of path to overcome that fear so we can have a better relationship with him and so he can show more love to us. Get this, our heads. Dear Jesus, we all have fears. Come into our lives. Give us the plan to overcome those fears so we may love you more and be more grateful and praise your name. For Jesus' sake, amen. Amen. amen.